One of the parts that's really difficult as a manufacturer is when something doesn't work or something goes wrong. Now, personally, I enjoy challenges and I like problem solving. So, in a way, I enjoy the problem solving. But uh, in the case of these 1893 uh, firing pins, uh, this last batch I made had a group of them uh, warped. Now, I had an argument with a customer once upon a time. He said you couldn't heat treat firing pins because they warp. Um, and I said that, well, that's not entirely true. Any firing pin should be heat treated, but a lot of it has to do with process. And yes, there is a high risk of warpage. Now, I don't know if you can see... Uh, let me grab a scale here. I don't know if this will show up on camera or not. But it is uh, severely warped. Now this is the, the worst one in the batch, but uh, it is quite bad. It's a banana. So the problem solving then becomes, well, how do you, how do you change your process to fix that? And there's a couple of things that the heat treater and I talked about. Um, Anytime you heat treat a part, you're bringing the metal up to the point where the contents of the metal start to move around. And since it can move, it can flex, it can warp, it can do all kinds of things. So if this part is in the heat treat basket like this, and it doesn't even have to have any weight applied to it, just its own gravitational pull, could have caused it to warp some. So uh, we talked about, you know, making a, a basket that it, the parts hang in. Um, that's one possibility. Uh, another thing that we looked at though, uh, was induction hardening. And uh, this is a, a simple gauge that I made to check these firing pins. And essentially it's at the the limits of what I deemed accessible. Now you can see this one dropped all the way in like it should, which means that in this position it's good. But if you index it nine or 180 degrees, it no longer travels the full way. That means that one's no good. Now, could I assemble this into a gun? Would it work? Probably. Uh, but I try to limit the amount of parts that go out um, you know, there's always a margin of error, especially with any old gun, especially with Mausers. Uh, so you never know. You want to you want to limit the the risks. We'll put it that way. Uh, these induction hardened parts. Um, if you're not familiar with induction hardening, uh, I'd, I'd recommend you look it up. It's it's a pretty awesome process. Uh, it's been around forever. Um, in fact, the induction hardening machine that they did these parts on are from the 1940s. Um, so I thought that was pretty, pretty slick in and of itself. But uh, basically they just hardened the tip here and the tail end here. Uh, along with the process, it's a lot better controlled. Uh, so there's less risk of warping. And these parts are, I mean, just absolutely perfect. So this is part of manufacturing and this is part of the cost of manufacturing is problem solving, determining new processes, uh, figuring out different ways to do it. Um, it is all very expensive and time consuming, um, but it's, it's a part of the game. Um, so I thought you guys might find that interesting. Uh, from now on, we'll be using a different material, different process. I haven't done any destructive testing on these yet, um, but I have no doubts whatsoever that uh, they will definitely hold up to the worst abuse possible. Um, so I am I'm happy to uh, have that resolved.